What's up everybody welcome back to another episode. Today's our first slow day in the shop in months so I decided to line up a few of our boats that compete against each other and just break down a little bit of features of what you're going to be getting if you're looking at a Lure 11.5, a Bonafide SS107, or Jackson Kayak Liska. All these kayaks are priced around the $1,300 range. We're going to break it down for you today, give you guys a bunch of info on each one of these boats and hopefully help you make an informed decision on what to buy at their $1,300 price point. Is you've got the Lure 11.5 right here to my left. That one is 11 foot, 6 inches, 34 inches wide with a seat height that's adjustable 10 inches off the deck. The Bonafide SS107 here is 10 foot, 7 inches long, 34 and a half inches wide with a seat height of monstrous 15 inches off the deck. The last one here, the Jackson Liska, is the longest kayak of the bunch at 12 foot, 1 inches and also 34 inches wide and seat height is seven inches off the deck. The overall weights of these boats is the Lure 11.5 comes in at 74 pounds, the Bonafide 107 is 84 pounds, and the Liska comes in at 82 pounds. Now again you guys all these kayaks have removable seats. The Liska unpins, this one can unclip, and this one has a couple little wing nets in the back and can be taken off. I will say the lure will save you the most weight. That seat's about 15 pounds, and that can come off and really help make this into a lighter boat. Um, overall, they say this is the lightest one of the bunch, but picking it up, it doesn't feel any lighter than either of these others. So I'd be curious to actually put it on a scale and see. One thing that does make moving these boats around a lot easier is the wear strips and or wheel and the keel on this one. So on the back of all these boats, you'll notice this little guy. That is called a wear strip or a sacrificial keel. Every boat has them, uh, at least in this price point, most all boats will have some sort of a wear strip. The Feel Free is the only one that uses a molded in wheel and the keel. Kind of a notch to the Feel Free. It allows you to pick up that front handle and move it around without actually having to physically drag the boat. Now I will say if you're going any sort of distance, there's no substitute for a cart. Get yourself a cart, it will make life a lot easier. Um, but if you're just moving it around on grass or dragging it around, either, any of these kayaks can be drugged and the lure is going to hold up the best for dragging it around because of that wheel. And while we're looking at sterns here, let's talk about power pole mounts. Um, this boat, the RS-107, will take a power pole, but you would have to physically drill holes and do the install yourself. But the stern of this boat is blocky and easy to access with this access port and would be easy to install it on. The Jackson is the only one that comes pre-drilled with threaded inserts for a power pole mount. So this would be an easy bolt-on situation. Now let's talk about rudders. The only one that comes pre-plumbed to add a rudder to is the Lure 11.5. You can see those rudder lines right there, um, the hole in the boat. A fairly easy install. It takes about 15 minutes to do the install on this boat. And definitely makes this boat a lot more maneuverable, a lot easier to handle on the water. Uh, the 107 has a hole it also has these little inserts where you can add a rudder but it's been almost a year and we have yet to see a bona fide specific rudder come out for this boat i will say it tracks pretty good for its size but having a rudder is a really nice upgrade on a kayak allows you to just have a lot more control so definitely would love to see a rudder for the bona fide i'd also love to see him pre-plumbed because it's very time consuming if the hoses aren't pre-ran you're going to spend a lot of time running lines same here on the Jackson. It has a spot to add a rudder, but again, it's not pre-plumbed. It would definitely be a time-consuming venture to put it on. And you heard me talk about access on the Bonafide. This is the only one that comes with that rear access blade. Both the Jackson and the Feel Free have this little circle deal that you could cut out and you could add an access plate in here to get access to the back of the boat. But the Bonafide comes pre-done with a plate. You just unscrew these four bolts and then it gives you access to the whole stern of this boat. If you're wanting to back up screws um, or add any sort of a rigging toward the stern of your boat, it makes it a lot easier. Talk for a second about interior storage. All three of these kayaks come with the front hatch and a pretty good sized interior storage. The lure is the kind of standard oval hatch that we've seen on kayaks for a long time. Plenty of room inside here, enough room where you could slide rods down along the side if you wanted to. Um, but the oval hatch is a little bit limiting as far as size goes. It's a fairly watertight hatch, which is nice. 
Over here on the Bonafide, it's kind of cool. You get their two-way hatch. So it opens this way, and you've got a big opening that you can put lots of gear inside. Definitely easy access. And my favorite thing about this hatch is if you are wanting to store your rods, it can open this way too. So you have lots of access in sort of a clean angle to, to slide your rods down inside there. On the jacks in here, it's got the twist lock. Again, pretty cavernous opening, lots of space inside there. Uh, it flips pretty far forward so you can still get things inside. This is a little accessory bag that Jackson comes with, with a flag. Um, fairly easy in and out, just a twist lock storage. And so while we're looking at the bow, let's talk handles. Because that's an important feature uh, when you're moving your boat around. Feel free has a nice molded in handle that's easy to grip, easy to pick up and roll. The Bonafide comes with a bolt-on handle, which is probably the most ergonomic of the three. Uh, also sideways, so it's easy to grab a hold of, easy to move around. And the last one is the Jackson. They're using a traditional webbing style handle, but it is on this axis, which makes it fairly easy to pick up and move around. Let's talk for a second about paddle storage. All three kayaks have molded in paddle storage on the side. So you see a little groove cut out here. You lay your paddle down inside here. The bungee would go up and clip and hold it in place. You see the same thing on the Bonafide. It's a little bit more defined on this one. And then also on the Jackson here, similar. They go with a little bit longer bungee so it supports more of the paddle and also has this little pull tag. So small features, but make a little bit of a difference. As far as paddle stagers, so when you're standing in the kayak, so I'm in the kayak and I want to just park my paddle. Jackson has the bungee right in the front so you can just stow your paddle, it can sit alongside. Over here on the Bonafide, you get the cool little paddle stager right there in the front. The Feel Free does not have anything like that. You would just basically be putting it along the side or having it in your lap on this boat. Unless you wanted to customize, rig something up, of course. You could do, you know, you got plenty of room up here to rig something up. On the stern of these boats, looking at handles, you'll see that the Jackson has a molded in kind of spot under here for a handle. On the back of the Bonafide, you have this little flip up handle that is really nice. And on the lure, you have a couple of options. You get the webbing handle if you're gonna be running a rudder, or you get the molded in handle if you don't use a rudder. So you have options there. It comes with the drag chain ability. So you can run a drag chain from your cockpit down here and the chain would drop through this hole. And basically what that does, it slows you down when you're drifting in rivers. Um, it's not a, an anchor that's gonna hold you in place per se, but it definitely works well if you're drifting. Any of these boats could easily be outfitted with an anchor trolley system like a Yak Attack, Lever Lock, or something like that. Uh, fairly standard install we do when we sell somebody a fishing kayak, depending on what sort of waters they plan on being in. Now, if we're talking about adding accessories, typically we're gonna be talking about track systems. All three of these boats feature track systems, and they're all unique and different. So starting with the Jackson over here, You'll see it's got Yak Attack tracks, but they're using the GTSL, which means these are plastic tracks. Uh, we don't see those fail very often, but it is an interesting point that Bonafide decided to go with the aluminum GT track. So a little bit heavier duty, a little bit smaller tracks, so a little less room to work, but they are all aluminum, so they're a little bit more expensive. On Feel Free, they use metal tracks as well. They have their own proprietary track system. So the good news is, you can drop in your accessories anywhere you want to on this track. The bad news is you either need to buy a Feel Free Mighty Mount, which is an extra $30 part, and or a Yak Attack track adapter, which are these little guys. And basically what those do is they slide over the T-bolt and allow this to fit into the wider track. So $4 every time you want an add accessory, whereas these guys you can just slide right on like you see on the Omega rod holder here. Speaking of that, in the accessory pack for the Liska, you get an Omega rod holder that comes with the boat Neither of these other guys have the accessories that come standard with them like that. Although the Feel Free does come with flush mount rod holders on the stern, the Bonafide does not, and the Jackson does. So they come with the two flush mounts. You'll also notice in the track area that the Jackson has two additional pieces of GTSL tracks here, as well as two small pieces of tracks next to the seat. Maybe if you wanted to add a cleat or a cup holder, now on the Bonafide, you do not have that. You could add tracks. Again, they give you lots of flat places to add additional features, but it doesn't come standard with it. Uh, the Feel Free, again, does have the tracks along the tank well. 
and they're using this little sliding bungee system um, to secure your load. They also add a couple of crate tie downs planning ahead if you're going to do a black pack or a feel free crate or something of that nature your tie downs come standard. All three of these kayaks are meant for standing. They give you a nice wide standing platform. That's why these kayaks are so wide. Uh, they all have the adjustable height chair, so it's easy to get up and down out of your seat. So the Jackson one in particular, you sit with a little bit lower seat position. You have two scuppers here to support the standing platform. You've got lots of open space. Your foot pedals are out in front of you. Your sonar hatch is out in front of you. And the SS 107, a little bit tighter in the space, but the hole feels a little bit more rigid. You have these scuffers right underneath your feet that support the deck. So although you do get a little bit of flex, it's not too bad. A nice padded platform. On the feel free, you step into this and it just feels by far the most solid. They use a piece of plexiglass underneath their foam that distributes the weight. So when you're standing on it, it feels like you're standing on something rigid. It's basically like a, a cutting board underneath there. As far as getting down in and out of the seats, the higher seat positions definitely make it nice for that. So again, seven inches, 10 inches, 15 inches off the deck. Uh, the downside is this one doesn't go all the way flush with the floor. So even in the low position, you're still fairly high, about seven inches off the deck. This one and this one do go all the way low. I had and dropped them all to the low position just so you guys can see and compare. The feel free goes the flushest with the deck all the way to the ground. You can see the bona fide one there still has I don't know, a good seven inches off the deck, even in the low seat. And then the Jackson lowers to about four, three to four inches off the deck. Now, another thing we got to talk about when we talk about seats is how easy is it to adjust when you're on the water? The thing about the feel free seat that I really like is it's simply, you lift the seat and it's got a ratcheting mechanism that lifts the seat up and holds it in place. When you want to lower it, you just grab the red strap and drop it down. And it's got positions, so you can position it anywhere in between that you want to get the right seat height. Over here on the Bonafide, your system gets a lot more complex. You gotta flip this lever on each side, take this up, flip this guy out, pull it forward so it makes, sorry, makes contact with that little hook. And then you, you physically gotta pick the seat up and put it in place so it doesn't fall down. Now I'm doing that one-handed so it looks a little clumsy, but you saw how easy this one was to do one-handed. This one is definitely more cumbersome. The last seat here is a Jackson seat. And these guys have little pins that just pop in here and hold this thing in place. So whether you're in high seat or low seat position, you gotta fiddle with this thing and get it to slide through the plug just right. And when you're ready to lift it up, again, kind of a two-handed job put it up there in the, the rear seat mount, drop it in place, and then plug it back in. So can you do that from the water? Sure, you can do it. Their boats are really stable. Um, but most people are gonna find their seating position and use it like that for the day. Or maybe they'll switch it if they're gonna paddle long distance. Whereas in this seat, I think you'll find yourself messing with the seat position a lot more uh, and tuning it in because it's just so easy. Now, when I'm out fishing, if I'm just fishing flat water, I'm honestly not messing with my seat that much. So I'd rather have comfort and ergonomics and the ability to adjust the seat more so than just the, uh, the ease of adjusting the seat. So let's get into that next. Let's sit in all three and kind of talk about which one feels the best. So the first boat I'm in is the Jackson kayak with the elite seat. I love how high the seat goes. And I also like how it has a bit of articulation to the back. That feels really, really nice. Again, you don't sit quite as high in this boat, but it still feels very comfortable and I, I sit high enough. When I'm in the low seat position, I definitely feel very connected to this boat. Uh, it's got kind of a mono hole, which we'll talk about. It makes it feel like a, more of a kayak, more of a boat that I could really zip in and out of eddies in and be more, more playful in. So I definitely like the cockpit fit of the, uh, the Jackson Kayak Liska. Next, I'm over here in the Bonafide SS 107. And when you look at me in this, look at my legs. I'm six foot two and I'm almost at a 90 degree angle when I'm in the high seat position. So this is a kayak that is just incredibly comfortable to be in all day. Again, with the seat back, it fits really high, sort of wraps around your torso. Uh, the comfort is absolutely amazing. So if you're suffering with a bad back or you're somebody that wants to just be able to stand right up in your kayak, uh, that high chair is definitely makes it easier to do it. This is a feel free lure with the gravity seat. Have this one set up all the way in the high position. And you can see I'm not in a 90 degree angle, but I still sit pretty darn high in this boat 
One thing you'll notice is the backrest is more of a lumbar support, more of a lower back support. It doesn't come all the way up to my shoulder blades, but I've sat in this seat a ton and a really long time, and I could say it's one of the most comfortable seats that I've been in. Just the overall ergonomics of the pan, uh, the ride height, uh, just a really, really comfortable seat. So some people will say, oh, the seat back isn't high enough. Before you make that decision, try it for yourself because I've also heard a lot of people say it's the most comfortable seat they've ever sat in. And again, the ability to dial in your ergonomics or your ride height is, is pretty cool on the gravity seat. Definitely unique. You'll also notice a couple of different ideas when it comes to sonar pod and rigging. So let's get into that. Let's break that down a little bit for you guys. Feel Free does a thing called a sonar pod. It is probably the easiest to rig because it comes pre-installed with a gasket on the top. So you mount your fish line to the top, you run your power wire, transducer wire inside, and then another gasket for your transducer wire, and then you simply screw the transducer to the bottom of it. If you this. look inside, you'll notice a, a hollow spot here. This is where you tuck in all your extra transducer wire. Your battery lives right inside there, so fairly secure place for your, uh, your battery to not be down. You have four of these little clips, or three of these little clips to secure it down. And then the nice thing is when you're done, this whole pod comes out, and you can take that to your car, and have it stored where it's safe. You don't have a fish finder mounted to your kayak. Uh, you also see it's got a hole that goes all the way through to the bottom of the boat. Feel Free does have accessories like the Feel Free Overdrive, Pedal Drive, as well as our Motor Drive that attaches to that. So you have a lot of options that you can take this boat as a paddle kayak and grow with it. Now I will say this pod is made out of a fairly inexpensive thin plastic. Whereas when we go look at the Bonafide pod, it's like an injection molded heavy duty plastic part. It's almost like a, uh, like a dry box. When you look here, you've got a nice seal that goes all the way around it. Again, a place for a battery to fit snugly inside. We usually use a bit of closed cell foam to kind of make a battery bed. Uh, this one, when you're adding stuff to it, you need to do more drilling. So if you wanted to add wires and stuff, you're actually drilling through the box. Uh, the nice thing is if you mess up, the boxes are replaceable. Um, it's got a little seal on the bottom here that keeps it a nice dry ride. So the overall sonar hatch on this one, I'd say is a little bit nicer quality, a little bit drier, um, but functionality wise, they do basically the same job. Now Jackson has a little bit different approach to their sonar pod. They give you a track on top to mount your fish finder. So you can use a Yak Attack fish finder mount or whatever you want. Your battery and your wires can all live inside this box here. And then they give you a scupper transducer. So you can use a Lowrance um, or any scupper transducer. And then the hole on the bottom is big enough to fit um, a big transducer. So three different schools of thought there on how to do it. But all three of them are set up to fairly easily rig a transducer. Now let's flip it over and look at the, uh, the holes. We're going to start just by looking at the transducer spots. All right, let's throw a tape on these transducer holes and see what we're looking at. Uh, this one's about nine inches long on the Jackson Liska. Over here, you've got about 12 inches of space. And look at that, about three inches of depth. On the Feel Free one, about the same, 12, and about three inches of depth or so on this one as well. So when you're buying your boat, just be mindful of what fish finder you may want to run, and that'll help dictate uh, what you get there. So this to me is where the rubber meets the road. You know, a lot of people buy kayaks because of features. What I look for in a kayak is how the thing paddles. How does it feel when I'm on there? And what has everything to do with that is whole design of the boat. Now looking at these three boats, you'll notice three unique takes on whole design. All the way to the right here, this is the most traditional hole design. It's kind of a mono hole. You notice it's got keel that runs the entire length of the boat, a couple of channels that add tracking, and then big buoyant edges that are really hard. See that line? That's called your chine, and that's a really defined chine. That's gonna give this boat a huge amount of initial stability. Not having a lot of ridges and stuff in the boat is gonna allow this thing to slide over current, over water, and be a little bit more playful than say this boat right here. This is a Bonafide SS107, and they use kind of a catamaran, a modified catamaran hole design. So you've got a keel here that pierces the water, and then spreads it out over these two catamarans. And having all this buoyancy out on your edges on either side basically makes it like a pontoon boat. It's incredibly stable. That's why they can get the 15 inch high chair. Um, and it still tracks very well because of the center, center groove here. 
the nice keel on the back, and each pontoon kind of acts like its own keel too. So tracks very well, handles very well, but when you get it into current and moving water, it's definitely going to be more prone to catch water on these different edges. Lastly, here we've got the Feel Free, which is sort of like a tri-hole design. Um, anytime you get a boat that's this short and wide, you have to do something for tracking. So what they've done is a center pillar with these deep V that helps the boat track and go straight. And then it rolls off into that hard chine secondary edge right here. So the lure carries this volume fairly far up into the bow and the stern. You see on the Bonafide, it carries it almost all the way to the bow and the stern. And on the Jackson, you'll notice it taper just ever so slightly. So in order of stability, this is going to be most stable, second most stable, third most stable. In order of which is the most fun to paddle, one, two, three. So if you're floating rivers or you're doing any sort of dynamic water, take a hard look at that Jackson. You'll be super impressed with it. The lure also does really well in class one to two slow moving rivers. And I know guys that use the Bonafide in that sort of water and it does well too, but I think you're going to be able to have a little bit more fun and challenge yourself a little bit more in the, in the Jackson. It's one more look for you guys from the stern. Super cool to see these different takes on hole design. A lot of thought goes into these uh, to making these kayaks work well for their specific intended use. All right, I just flipped all three of these over and I did want to say the Liska was the easiest one to move around with the chairs out. So I mo removed all the accoutrements and the Liska definitely feels the lightest even though in theory it's 82 pounds, it felt lighter than this one with the seat off and definitely lighter than the lure with the seat off. I had a ton of fun comparing these three boats today. I definitely will get a review of the Liska and the Bonafide soon. Uh, I've spent a ton of time on the lure and I've got a few videos on this one over the years, but these two boats deserve a little bit more time in the spotlight because they're incredible designs. There are a lot of unique features and they're both fairly new to the marketplace. So I will get on that, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Go down to the comment section and tell me which boat you would choose. Tell me why you would choose it. What sort of features stand out as important to you. And if there's anything I missed you guys, don't hesitate to call me out. I don't catch it all. This is always a throw together video when the shop's quiet. Uh, but I did want to just get you familiar with a few different boats in that $1,300 price point. Uh, if you have anything else to add, the comment sections are below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, this is Dan from Headwaters Kayak Shop wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.